we are really happy to welcome our first speaker, and the moderator will be uh, with us, the founder of La, Mer La Mercatique, Grégory Puy. Please welcome on stage. Thank you. Hi, Hi David. So, we are together. So, Big Black Show is the head of digital at Nestle, um, and we are here to talk about digital transformation for 20 minutes. Yeah. Um, so, Pete, um, when did you Je arrive at uh, Nestle? Because Je te disais, les amis. when you arrived at Nestle, yeah, it was yeah. like uh, not such a digital group. It's an amazing global group. What is the first thing you did when you arrived? Well, in fairness, there's a lot of digital activity uh, at Nestle, and I think part of the role of the chief digital officer is to really curate the the content, so to speak, and ensure that it's circulating. It's working against best practices. And you know, the first thing I try to do is really build a community, um, which for Nestle is a bit of a challenge. We're a radically decentralized company. Uh, we have 340,000 employees um, fragmented across multiple markets and you know, several thousand brands. And, and so <laughs> there's a lot to curate. So the first piece is like, how do you just you know, build a community of brand builders and um, identify a few early wins um, and keep the frameworks really, really simple. So we developed a, um, a digital strategy based on three pillars and we're still disciplined to it. Listening, engaging, um, inspiring, transforming. You know, listening is about how do we reinvent the way we absorb signals to drive action. Engaging is really about next generation CRM, community management and the like, and the transforming um, you know, it's kind of similar to what we heard from Bonin earlier about how do you change the enterprise? How do you transform it? How do you think about digital as much as an operating principle as a communications channel? And this morning you told me about friction. And uh, you told me, like, the, the solution, we don't want to solve uh, tension. We want to manage them. Can you talk a little bit about that, managing yeah. tensions? If you strip all the buzzwords off, you know, what we do, digital, social media, at the end of the day, we're training leaders, and we're training leaders to adapt and thrive and create value in a highly disruptive environment. And what I focus on with all of the um, brand builders and members of our digital acceleration team, I, I, I emphasize that it's really important to understand how to manage, not resolve tension. In business, we always are looking to resolve tension, black or white, absolute, but everything in digital is a tension point. You know, the big one is stimulation versus integration. Should digital be standalone or should it be integrated? And the answer is yes and yes. Um, ROI versus intuition. You know, sometimes we feel like we need data to find the bathroom, but in fact, there's a lot of intuition that can drive really smart decisions. But it's not one or the other, and you have to identify these, what I call digital dualisms, these tension points that you need to manage. And what I've generally found, having been close to hundreds of leaders across Nestle, is that the leaders that understand how to manage tension move the fastest in the organization. And at the end of the day, that's what we want. We want to create world-class business leaders, and digital is the context to do that. I really liked a thing that I've read about you, about going back to the fundamentals, because, well, what I've seen with a lot of groups and a lot of brands is that usually they are going like in this fast pace, running out after the, running after the, the last app like Vine or yeah. Snapchat or whatever, and, uh, your statement is, well, fundamentals are very, very important. They are fundamentals. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, I say fundamentals are fundamental. And it's OK to follow you know, the, the new utilities and the new buzzword. But you know, it has to be anchored to brand fundamentals. And they haven't fundamentally changed. And I was attracted to Nestle. They have a world-class brand building framework called Brand Building the Nestle Way. And there's a number of rooms, know your consumer deeply, create engaging brand experiences, win with shoppers. And to make digital work in an organization, you have to demonstrate to your management, especially your middle managers, that digital is the ultimate vitamin to bring those brand building principles to life. If you build it too much on the sidelines, it may work in a flash, but it's not sustainable. Um, so I'll give a good example. You know, <laughs> you know message quality matters, right? You know, Digi social media, 
buzz marketing, it's not going to correct bad messaging. So if you've got good messaging on the front end, grounded to great insights, you're going to get disproportionately rewarded in a world of technology-driven amplification. Um, but you've got to get the fundamentals down pat. And yes, there are instances where brands have driven a lot of engagement on platforms like Facebook and Twitter that aren't building their business because they didn't start with the right fundamentals on the front end. And so, you know, that to me is an absolute non-negotiable prerequisite for being a world-class digitally powered brand builder. Um, also, um, that was that what we've discussed together. Um, there's something which is very, very important um, about uh, digital. It is um, that Usually we talk a lot about marketing and communication, but it is a common knowledge that this is the top tip of the iceberg. In fact, digital is changing the global company. Can you yeah. talk about the implication of digital within the company, but marketing and, and communication, which is like uh, pretty obvious? Yeah, I mean, I am a, a fanatical believer that digital is as much an operating principle as it is a communications uh, channel. And what I mean by that is it's, it's better, faster, more adaptive, more fluid. Uh, more real time, it's always on, and that has massive organizational implications. That has huge implications for speed to market. That has massive implications for how we think about, you know, getting world class insights faster, leveraging data signals. And, you know, I spend a huge amount of my time thinking about things like how do I get Nestle brand builders in a radically fra fragmented network to talk to one another using social media on the inside. And if I can achieve that objective, I think there's going to be a lot of dividends beyond. We have, a, we have an internal social media network that very much like Facebook, but it's inside Nestle with over 200,000 brand builders. I manage a community of 3,500 uh, digital leaders or people that are interested in digital, and I publish every day. And I meticulously measure you know, the likes, the comments, the shares, the engagement, whether top executives are paying attention to what I say. I'm looking for informal sources of value that are popping up amongst the ranks, because uh, there is a certain digital Darwinism that, print, that applies internally in communication flows. But the idea is like, how do you change the way the, net, the, the, the organization teaches itself? You know, if you think about what makes digital, and social media in particular so powerful, it's network effects. You know, you've got radically distributed networks that are kind of talking to one another and moving knowledge to the top really, really fast. Why can't that work internally? So that's a big area. It's also a very selfish and practical endeavor because it's not like, you know, a lot of us in digital, we don't have huge budgets. We may not even have a lot of people, so we have to be digital by design. Digital leaders are very efficient at, at making, um, you know, limited resources scream. You know, that's what I learned when I did a startup. You know, you just get a dribble of money from your, your VCs and you had to be incredibly efficient, so you always found yourself defaulting to the digital solutions that were just very, very efficient by design. Are you also thinking about uh, digital within products, like uh, a digital enhanced product within Nestle? Yeah, I, listen, I think everybody is thinking about how do you wrap service on top of product. That's why a lot of our food brands like Maggie have, I think, you know, uh, outstanding recipe engines or service models that sit on top of them. Um, Nescafe is doing a lot of work along those lines as well. You know, is Nespresso a product or a service? Well, it depends. I bet half the people would divide up along those lines. And, you know, it is an experience in what you do with the website, what you do with the social interaction, what you do with the customer service is very, very important. And I'm not speculating and I'm not dancing in the fuzz here. We know from very, very meticulous anal analysis of earned media what drives the conversation. And experience is very, very important. And so the question is how do we you know, make sure that the product itself makes people want to talk about it, um, but what are the additional layers that we can put on top of it which add value to consumers' lives? And you talked a little bit about the mindset of startups. I know that you're working a lot with startups. Can you give example? Can you explain yeah. also how a big uh, group as Nestle can work with startups because it is not the same pace, it is not the same way of working, uh, not the same time kind yeah. of teams? And well, although I started at PNG, I did kind of take about eight years off to kind of uh, do the startup scene. So to some extent, I kind of brought a lot of that to Nestle, and um, and it, it's a great challenge. But we've also, you know, like like other companies, we spent time in innovation hubs like the Valley or places, whether it's London, Berlin, Shanghai, Beijing, there's a lot of hubs that are creating a very special brand of energy 
that I think companies need to stay very close to. And it's very important in marketing today to maintain a, a certain degree of humility about what you know and what you don't know. So we have uh, been keeping our ear to the pulse of startup culture to inspire us, to motivate us, maybe even scare us a little bit, but in a very constructive way. I manage a Silicon Valley innovation outpost. Um, similar to what you heard in the previous presentation, we're open for business. If you have something that can enhance our, our brands or clusters of brands, we want to hear from you. And we're going to develop smarter systems for kind of getting you in the door. But yeah, it's very, very important. You know, probably the biggest inspiration when I uh, literally um, months after I got to Nestle, brought some of the executives to the Valley, and um, we were really impressed with hack culture. Facebook, Google, even the smaller companies. And that's what, in, that's what inspired us to create the digital acceleration team. So we tried to create a little bit of a startup carve out right above our executive suite, literally right above our executive suite. And that's had a profound impact. And now it's cascaded into 13 different markets. And it's one of the most exciting things about my job. You know, because I have the benefits of a large company because there's a lot of things Nestle has done really, really well over the years. We're nearly 150 years old. But we're also kind of created pockets of entrepreneurialism that I think um, are going to lead to some very, very promising outcomes. Do you have an example of startups that you are working with and that is a very, very interesting experience for, for Nestle? Well, we were at Pinterest when they were practically early, early on, and that kind of one of the, some of the advantages of working early with these players is that you get in early on the ad model. We've co-developed co with them. We've had some very, very impressive results in terms of uh, testing their promoted pin model. There's a number of players in the social content management system that we've worked very, very early with. Um, as you know from uh, you know our positioning, we're focusing very heavily on the nutrition, health, and wellness space, so we're actually focusing on startups in that particular area who can really kind of help us, um, you know, complete that goal. And so, but many, many examples. I mean, our outpost has been up and running about 18 months, and we've probably touched hundreds of companies, and we hope to step it up even more. Right. One statement, maybe you, you will tell me if you, if you agree with, um, I believe that digital transformation is mostly uh, human resources uh, thing, like you have to have people that understand the mindset because it's mostly a question of mindset. How do you deal with that? I mean, how do you make sure that people within the company and you have uh, a lot of employees, like thousands, uh, how do you make sure they're all on the same pace and uh, on the same mindset? You know, fundals, fundamentals are fundamental. I think it all comes down to leadership. I mean, I think leaders, are very comfortable breaking down barriers, uh, driving cross-functional um, interaction, and um, you know, and leading others to you know the, the the destination or the business results. And so, you know, I think the first criteria is just cultivate really strong leaders. I think leaders naturally gravitate to opportunity, and digital is an opportunity that is just staring us in the face you know, loudly, and so they're going to be there, plus they're all doing it anyways in their personal lives, so the, connecting the dots isn't that difficult. But that's, that's the key thing. I think, I think it's the, the qualities of leadership, because as, as I said earlier, you know, this is a pretty tough space. You know, it's not like there's a playbook you can pull off the shelf and say, this is the way I do digitally powered brand building. Yes, there are case studies, um, ad campaign case studies, but really moving the organization, it's pretty tough. So I think strong leaders inevitably kind of work their way through the tension and the ambiguity and get there, and that's what we need to look for. So you, you um, first um, educate somehow uh, the leaders, and you also have this program in Switzerland uh, where yeah. some people are coming uh, to uh, really embrace digital, better understand yeah. it. Um, and we've been talking about that this morning with one person uh, who is in France, actually. And, uh, Philippe Armand, where are you? Exactly. I don't know where he is. Oh, <laughs> there just he there. Is. Proud graduate. Um, can you talk maybe a little bit about that program and yeah. maybe his experience? Because that, I think, is very interesting for others. Yeah, kind of going back to what I said, we went to the Valley. We said, could we, could we emulate hack culture <laughs> in Switzerland by the lake in the large company? And it, it almost sounded, you know like the impossible you know, challenge. But we created a program, and here's how it works. We um, invite, we, we, we encourage people to apply for eight month rotations in the center, 12 at a time. We probably get about four times as many applications as spaces. 
puts a lot of pressure on me to create a world-class leadership program, and I have to keep raising the bar. They come, they do intensive training, they get assigned to brands like Nescafe uh, and others to kind of work on their, not just their digital strategy, but their brand strategy. They help us operationalize community management, and they do a lot of hackathons. Philippe, who's out in the front, who's now running uh, digital for Nestle Waters globally down the street, he, um, you know, he was, he, was a, he, was a, he was a member of the first DAT, and he led a whole bunch of hacks on very interesting questions like, you know, how do we mobilize food services? Um, or how do we take the concept of Nestle CSV, our version of social responsibility, and use digital to take that, take that to the next level? And it's had a very important impact. And, and one thing I would tell all of you, you know, never underestimate the power of organizational virality. If you hit a winning idea, it will move fast. We started the DAP program a little over two years ago. Um, we've got uh, 13 similar programs in our markets. They all bring a different variant to the model. In India, they do a wonderful job combining the agencies with the DAP members. In Italy, they bring the shopper folks together. Um, it's all different, and we kind of have now created this ecosystem. But again, like, how do you create kind of an island or islands of startup culture in a large company, but with the goal of making the digital piece obsolete. Because at the end of the day, you know, I need to make my job obsolete. I want everyone to be digital by design. And that should always be the goal, because digital is a, powers everything. It's just that we're in a heavy stimulation mode right now. OK. My last question, and uh, if you guys have questions, don't hesitate to use the app, because I, I'm going to have some time. Yeah, they're awesome. Um, so my last question is very easy to ask, very complicated to answer. Um, imagine a group, like a global group, who hasn't touched digital at all, which doesn't exist really, but still, which is in a very early stage in uh, the digital transformation. What would be uh, the very best advice that you can give them, uh, like first step, uh, first move, what, what, what would it be? That's starting in this area. Yeah. Well, I'm a big believer in you know, listening is so important. And maybe I'm a little biased. I started a listening company that I sold to Nielsen. But I think this notion of understanding, you know, I believe the conversation and the data signals are infinitely, infinitely revealing of brand value. The ability to understand unarticulated consumer need, unmet opportunities, and really understanding that, not only about your brand, but about your category and life stage is a very important starting point. I think too often in marketing we jump to the marketing campaign and not to the insight. So I'd say, you know, get the listening piece right. And there's a volume of data. Bonin, I think, articulated that so well in the earlier conversation about the, it's not just about big data, it's just all the data streams, you know, unpack brand value, whether it's the database of intentions through search, whether it's the clickstream analysis in terms of why consumers go from one place to another on a website, um, to the conversation which continues to get more interesting. And I think in 2015, it's starting to become much more visualized. It's kind of moving from text to the world of Pinterest and Instagram, which may provide a whole different value. But getting that listening piece right is the starting point of wisdom, in my view. There were a few questions about human resources. Uh, one was, um, how do you make sure that people uh, trust you? It was like, um, I don't know where it is, but, but whatever. Um, how do you make sure that people understand that digital is part of their job, even though there's not digital in the name of the, uh, descrip I mean, the description uh, job? How do you make sure that they, they trust that, that digital is very important for their job, but also that they should embrace it then, if they don't really agree? Listen, I think if you embrace this notion that it's fundamentally an operating principle, better, faster, cheaper, smarter, then everyone, <laughs> everyone benefits from digital. DNA. And again, what's unique today is that we're all doing it. It's not like, you know, it's not like in the 50s people were creating TV commercials in their free time. But for all of us that are in the marketing community, we're doing it in our free time. When we go from work, we're going on to Facebook, we're going on to Twitter, we're creating blogs, we're uploading photos of our families. And to some extent, you know, the digital context is in across everything we do. So we just need to build simple bridges between our everyday activity and what we need to do in business. And then suddenly you realize it's not just about Pete's job. It's everyone has an opportunity to turn this into a vitamin to create more value within their enterprise. There was a question about the KitKat crisis, uh, asking uh, how you handle it. But I believe you were not with Nestle at that time. Uh, oh, 
the Nestle, the, uh, the Nestle crisis. My yeah. question, maybe if you, I, I don't think you were there at that time in 2010, but uh, what has been the impact of this crisis on the Nestle group? That, that would, would be interesting also. Well, just as perspective, uh, shortly before I arrived, we had an issue with um, Greenpeace, and there were kind of two fundamental issues. One was, a, I think, a very legitimate issue around supply chain sourcing of palm oil. And again, one thing you need to remember is that you know, no amount of PR or social media management is going to you know, erase the core foundations of an issue like that. You know? And so that issue was kind of brought up um, where we, I think, <laughs> I say we had a teachable moment, was the way we managed the conversation on Facebook, which led to a backlash. We kind of deployed legal authority to kind of you know, get rid of the videos. And of course, those things just don't work, and they create all sorts of issues. Hey, listen, I think what we've learned, and, and I got to be careful with the word learned, because none of us have really cracked the code. This is a very complicated space, but I think we've, we've made major efforts to better resource around online community management, which I think is an absolutely critical skill, and to do so 24-7, so it's not just on our hours, it's on the consumer's hours, and also to try to speak with a much more empathetic voice to the consumer. And, and that is um, easier said than done, because most of us are struggling on how do we scale bodies around all this conversation. But I think it was a very uh, healthy experience. It probably impacted the creation of my job. That's how <laughs> severe it was. Um, and I think we should all try to take those teachable moments and turn those into opportunities, and we're still learning. Thanks very much, Pete, for this open conversation. Um, well, it's very, very passionate uh, what you are saying, but the time is over, so we, we have to leave now. Uh, thanks very much, Pete. Thanks very much, everybody, for listening.